Tonight's podcast is brought to you by Codings 360. Serving the South Bay for over 10 years. When you need your house or business painted, who to call is a no-brainer. Call Codings 360 today for your free estimate. Tell them Luckily a Podcast referred you and receive up to 20% off. The phone number is 888-755-4445. Again, the number is 888-755-4445. Or you can reach them on the web at codings360.com. That's codings360.com. So we have here Elaine Bracken. Hi. Hi, Elaine. <laughs> Hi, Elaine. Hi. <laughs> you know what? You know what always tripped me out going before I met you. Mm-hmm. I heard you speaking por- Portuguese. I'm like, dude, that is it. It relaxed me. Like, <laughs> I don't know why, but it just put me at ease. I'm like, oh, it's like a lullaby. It, it got, and then I heard her speak Spanish, and I think you walked by the next day, and you're like, oh, habla español. <laughs> wow! <Like> barely. <laughs> my Spanish sucks. Well, it's always amusing to me hear how many people don't speak Spanish. Like at the airport, people will come up what? and you have you have <laughs> Ricardo, Maria, mm. and all of them. Say, no, 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 uh, no hablo español. And then like they what? give them blonde, blue-eyed Elaine to speak Spanish. <laughs> and they're looking at you like, "How did you learn this?" Yeah, they're like, "This is not real. Were you the, this is a joke for me." <laughs> Were you adopted? <laughs> Maybe. So how many uh, languages do you speak? Uh, with English, four. What about total? Wow. Four. Just with, four? Yeah, with English. So, Portuguese, mm-hmm. Francis, wow. and Spanish. Ooh. How do you say la clica in French? La clica. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I was setting that one up la all clica, day, dude. Ça va être la clica dans, dans n'importe quelle langue. In, in no matter what language, wow. it will be la clica. See? Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> say it again, say it again. That other one. Uh, I don't know which one it was. It was like French. It's French. Qu'est-ce que tu veux que je dis? What do you want me to say? La clica. La clica. La clica. The other one. <laughs> the next one. You said another. That's all the same shit. I, I just said... Um, okay, the, the words I used in French were la clica would be la clica in any language. So la clica, ça va être la clica dans n'importe quelle langue. That sounded bad. That, that sounded bad. That's what I was talking about. It did. <laughs> Dude, that's gonna take us I love to the how next I could level. say anything in French and you guys would be like, oh. Dude, it, when you're saying that, I'm like, I'm all at ease. I'm like, Yeah, but I could be saying the biggest bullshit and you wouldn't even just that's say the that. Best part <laughs> that of that's it. what I was saying. Yeah, you could tell us. That's, you, that's you, the best part of it. It's like when I was in Korea, people were like telling me how to say, you know, dog meat in just Korean. <laughs> <laughs> and so somebody taught me how to say, they go, Yeah, dog meat is, is bulgogi. So anytime you see bulgogi, it's dog meat. I found out 10 years later that they lied to me. Uh-huh. So this whole time, I'm avoiding bulgogi. <laughs> what does it really mean? It's just beef. <laughs> really? That's yeah. It. Maybe that's a just code. beef. It's not dog meat. <laughs> and part of me is for being dumb and not thinking about it. <laughs> Actually, one of the first times I ordered a, a steak, I didn't know... I, so I didn't speak French when I moved to France. And there was a whole year that I lived there that I still didn't speak it. Um, but in French, if you say a point... Uh, it means, oh God, I hope I'm getting this correct now what I'm saying, but uh, a point means like uh, like medium, like mm-hmm. the way that your steak is cooked. But I said yeah. a poil, which means naked. And so, of wow. course, the guy's like, oh, <laughs> what does she uh-huh. want? But, you know, of course, really? he, did, he just gave me the smile. And I think that he got what, what I was trying to say. But later, did he do a little I learned that I was... <laughs> Come here. <laughs> that means you. That's international sound of music. I'm in love. I still want to go to France. What's your favorite um, language to sing in? Uh, well, right now I have a little bit of an obsession with Portuguese. I've only been learning for, what month are we? April? April. Yeah, I've been learning April. for a year. 
Yeah. I've been learning Portuguese for a year. Um, and so right now that's my favorite to sing in, but it's easier to sing in French. And then, I don't know, Spanish was fun for a while, mm -hmm. but the problem is I mix. No puedo hablar <coughs> español porque confundo con, con portugués. Mm -hmm. You gotta say, wow. <laughs> foo, foo. Yeah. Foo. And so that, <laughs> like, I, I get teased all the time now because basically it sounds like I'm speaking Spanish with like a French Portuguese accent or something. Like it, it does, they don't make sense anymore. So I prefer to just stick to one. And right now it's Portuguese. It's, I think it's the most beautiful language. It is. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It is. So pretty. Like right now when you said that, I was like, wow. <laughs> you got ideas. I saw you, dude. Yeah, I just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this one whiskey. isn't Spanish. But, but the, see, this isn't Spanish. And you, but you don't know because it sounds like I'm speaking with an accent because I mix everything. Because I never studied in school, right? So everything that I learn <coughs> is... Uh, oh, you're on. I, I learn in the streets. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. I have a big mixture of, like, accents and a mixture of if vocabulary. You learn, if you learn German, you could probably, like, balance it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, is, that oh, yeah. is not on my list. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's they, a everything they say that's sounds mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it has, like, so aggressive. Dude, I was trying to take a picture of this lady and her dog in Germany, and she goes, Nein! <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like damn Hitler <laughs> he ruined that word I think no and see I only ever learned languages to sing in them and so I, it wouldn't make sense for me to learn German I don't know some German guy <laughs> I say I you do, it, say you do once you, you yes. might, don't justify it it doesn't sound pretty you might be able to make German sound smooth yeah no I'd be like <laughs> Hey, that's a, that's a lyric. Perfect <laughs> 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 so, How long have you been singing for? Since I was a little kid, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I have seven siblings, and when I was a little kid, they would basically just always tell me, "Shut up." So I guess that made me want to sing more. But yeah, I've been, I mean, since since I could sing, I guess. I always thought that I would be a diva performer, but then actually, like life gets in the way, so uh, I didn't really do music most of my life. Um, and then it wasn't until I was leaving France. Mm -hmm. I have a friend, uh, Thomas, who is an incredible singer, and he was like, "Hey, let's record something at my house." And so he recorded my first cover. <laughs> he he recorded um, my first cover, and that made me want to get back into it. And then when I came to LA. Um, turns out everybody's something, right? Like, I, I didn't know that. I, mm -hmm. I had never been to California before I came on vacation here. So I wasn't aware that every single person is a singer, actor, model, uh, ship on everything. They it, might be, but there are not that many good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, you know, you, everybody has a card, <laughs> whether, whether they do anything or not, and everybody's <laughs> something. So what happened is um, I met a guy at the airport playing mm -hmm. guitar, and I just asked for his card. And months later, he contacted me because, you know, I said I sing, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Months later, he contacted me and he said, Say, hey, I have um, I have a show. I told the agent about you and he wants you to play at mm -hmm. this place, um, Monarch Beach Hotel in, in Dana Point. And he said it's a four hours. At that point, I had never even sung like three songs in a place. <laughs> oh, I, wow. You know, I'd sung here and there and whatever, yeah, yeah. like little little gigs, but mm -hmm. like just a few songs like as mm -hmm. a guest or yeah, yeah. four hours. Wow. Um, and it's funny because they had told him, like, yeah, she sings kind of French pop, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The guy calls and he's like, so can you do top 40? And I was like, top 40? Wow. I just moved back to the U.S. I don't even know what that means. Like, what... <laughs> What is our top forty? I'll have to I'll have to research. You know, La Bamba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is top forty in LA? Also, this this changes things a lot. Uh, but I accepted it, and the mm -hmm. guy was just like, "Just buy an iPad. You'll be fine. Like you can put the lyrics, whatever." So I did it. Wow. I sang for four hours, and then I made some cards that said "singer," and from there I just wow. kept getting other gigs. Like I've never sought out a gig; everything just fell into my lap, which is good and bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really bad because it means I don't really know how to find one on my own. Like if I wanted to go find one, I wouldn't know. To mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. but it's cool to just be able to do stuff like this that. This podcast helps, <laughs> <laughs> believe me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what, though? What I found Singer out is for hire. <laughs> what I found out the thing, though, is don't trust anybody with business cards, trust people with stickers. Mm -hmm. hey, no joke, they stick, <laughs> they, they stick around. That, that hurts right here in my heart. No, we'll make you stickers, <laughs> okay? Just, yeah. so, just so everybody knows what's happening right now, it's because I said. I don't do stickers. This is why they're calling the sticker card. <laughs> I don't do stickers. I trust you. The, the people that give you stickers stick around. <laughs> 
Aye, you see, like, aye, we're getting bad puns. <laughs> no, I'm the kind of person that, like, my boyfriend will go to put anything on the refrigerator. I'm like, no, 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 just keep it white. Keep it white, please. I don't like... No magnets? No magnets. Um, sometimes he puts them, and then we remove them. We have a photo of us <laughs> on the refrigerator. They fly every time That's you open it. Oh, and a, a list of... Um, to do. Well, no, things that we need. Oh, my God, I have to tell you. So, so my boyfriend's French-Portuguese one of the reasons that I can speak all these things. <laughs> nice. um, but the first time that he ever wrote a list for things to do, he wrote needings. And I will never forget it. And so now every time I make a list for him, I write needings just because it's the most absolutely fucking ridiculous thing that you could possibly say in English, right? Like, it makes no sense. But I love it. So it's my new it's like more needings. I know. <laughs> I don't know, I'm horrible at lists, just period, and I'm great at putting stickers up on my walls and different stuff. <laughs> yeah, I write on my palm. And they're random. I, you guys can't see all these stickers that are around me, but they're definitely see, but random. Like all the business cards I have, they're out, out of business or they don't play anymore like that band right there. They've been, they stopped playing years ago. <laughs> and they still have the card. <laughs> oh, so it's kind of like the wall of bad luck right here. <laughs> so do your parents sing? No. No? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that took me off guard. Uh, no. <laughs> no, they That's they how don't, we are here. They don't sing, no. They're no. Not, Anybody in your family not. sing? Yeah. Uh, my sisters kind of sing. Not really? Yeah. Like, are you like the middle kid? Or? Oh, yeah. So, of eight, four boys, four girls, um, I'm the fifth child. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Care- no, no, careful. no, no, no. <laughs> being, being the fifth of eight mean, means like nobody really recognizes your existence. Uh-huh. And so it's like, hey guys, hey, 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 I'm over here. I don't know what I can sing. And and like, oh god, god, god go away. See, now they all look at you. you she sings. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey, she, right. yeah, hey, I have to do every possible thing. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start aerial arts. Everybody look at me. Oh, I'm, right? <laughs> you, want, you want the attention. That's why you started singing there. I get it. So if, if you're in a family of eight. Maybe it's also why I got the, the cut on my head, right? Like, hey, hey, somebody call me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't tell anybody about it for a couple of days because, you know, I just wanted to be in bed. And, oh, I have a cut on my head. This is what we're talking about for the podcast. Um, we'll I didn't tell anybody. We're going to edit it out. It'll be our secret. <laughs> my, yeah. my cut? Yeah. I have a pretty yeah. cool sticker you could put over that. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, look. It was all a dream. It was all a dream. <laughs> See, look. It's even perfect. It'll cover it right here. See? There it oh, is. Yeah, there it perfect. is. See? Perfect. It's got yeah. a crown and everything. And See, you you never know. All... You might start a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody already said, oh, it's okay. It's going to be your trademark scar i was like oh that's very oh, no such there thing you, you see these right here <laughs> Th- this is my my grandma used to say this is where they cut off my horns oh, God. <laughs> they're, they're like perfectly placed they are they're perfect. dude i had to do the the podcast with the band chencha with inches yeah it's it, it's a long story but <laughs> it's a funny yeah. story how they got the name but um the the drummer he speaks nothing but spanish he has a great mexican spanish voice very mm-hmm. powerful yeah. it's really good he has his own radio show and I'm the only one that kind of talks. Uh, well, I'm the one that speaks the better Spanish from the three, <laughs> which is not great. Yeah, my <laughs> so I'm like, sucks. I'm like, I want to say that's pretty badass in Spanish. Like, no, that it's all it's muy bueno. <laughs> <laughs> that's just sopping it up. <laughs> yeah, like I stopped learning Spanish when I was like five. So like my oh, yeah. my Spanish is at a fifth grade level, and I never passed. I never passed English class neither. So, uh, what's your favorite genre? <laughs> Moving, moving on. <laughs> 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 Is there a genre? To be honest, it's probably uh, either classical or like world music. I really oh, wow. love, I really love African stuff. Really? Yeah, stuff with like African beats. And oh, lately, it's been wow. kind of like Cirque kind of mm-hmm. things. Wow. Uh, I'm in love with Kizomba. A lot of people will like really criticize that, but why? Really? Because a lot of people don't like Kizomba. I think Kizomba's a shit. It's so pretty. Uh, however. I got to listen to that. Wait, I have to admit, I like Kizomba less now that I understand what they're saying. Oh. Because a lot of it's in Portuguese. Mm-hmm. It's from Angola. Uh, and it turns out, it, it, lyrically, it's like the most pathetic music ever. What are they singing ever. about? Now I'm curious. I I'm mean, going to look for something. I mean, like, I guess it's sex and stuff, but the way that they say it is just... Bad. Especially when they use English things, you're like, oh my god, that sounds so stupid. But you know, for Portuguese people, it probably sounds really nice. Uh-huh. Um, but no, it, it's just bad. It, lyrically, it's just bad. Like, but the rhythm kind of is nice. What kind of words are they oh, saying? I, uh, like, I don't. I, I like can't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean. Or, in, or <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't think of anything specific right now. I'm sorry. Have you I heard, failed you. Have you heard a Russian band? What was it? Oh man. Little Is big. Little big. No, hey, don't big? expose her to that. Man. No, no. That's, yeah, that's I don't bad. want to ruin your mind. Yeah, but don't, don't ruin their. Don't they ruin have her. a midget in the band. Okay. Just so you know. But they, it's the same way. It's all Russian stuff, but they sing it in English. So, like, everything is very sexualized in English. Oh, yeah. And it j- probably it, just sounds ridiculous to English people. But they love it over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're big. Yeah. They They're have a big. bear in the band. Mm. <laughs> They have a bear in it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You got to watch it. It's the uh, weirdest. It's explain- it, you just said ever. I shouldn't be exposed. No, but that, the, that what he said, I think it makes, is going to make more sense to you okay. when you watch yeah. it. That, that actually, that video's fine. The other ones, I'm like, mm. Yeah. I'm going to keep that one for my future children's children. Yeah. Because that one's going to ruin lives. You think, you think Putin, <laughs> he liked this? I think, think he, he leads to that song. Yeah. It's probably does. playing through his earbuds yeah. all day, dude. <laughs> okay. He sends it to Trump. Yeah. Oh, and they have clowns in there, too. Wasn't it that song? Wait, wait, clowns? What yes. Kind of clowns? Telling you this, I don't know if we want to expose this to her, but. Yeah, no, I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll oh, send man. it to you one of these days. I think that's the first phrase that I learned in all languages. What? I don't have time. Desculpe, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no tenho tempo. So your first, Je pas le temps. So your first See, lesson that's, that's in German. Right there, I do. Does, I love that. See. She could be like, hey, your house stinks. <laughs> and it sounds badass. Hey. <laughs> Ta maison, ça pue. <laughs> Dude, that's lovely. Dude, to me, that sounded like, hey, you're a good looking guy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Would you like to have some wine and some whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounded like to me. All right, so back to music. <laughs> yeah, back to music. <laughs> All right, so is there any music you don't like? Russian yeah. music? <laughs> <laughs> um, bad rap. I'm actually really into Portuguese rap right now. Mm-hmm. Um, really? Yeah, I There's some good stuff out there. I think it sounds fantastic. But again, I think it's the same thing. Like, my Portuguese is still not good enough that I understand everything when they're saying it stupidly fast like mm-hmm. that. And so I think somehow it's better. So maybe in a year from now, I'll be like, oh, my God, it's <laughs> so bad. But I so far, what I found is they tend to talk more about like problems and like world problems mm-hmm. and real subjects and not just yeah. like bitches and hoes. What's wrong with that? <laughs> uh, You're talking about dogs. <laughs> no, because that was one of my first things when I came into music was I wanted to be more of a role model, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, you didn't want to be an object. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And trying to hold that status is really hard. You're like, okay, I want it's one of the reasons that I also mm-hmm. picked up Ariel because I was like, okay, what's some what's a pretty dance that I can do yeah. and still be dressed? So, mm-hmm. so like, Okay, right now, the thing that I'm wearing, like, mm-hmm. it's sexy, yeah. but I'm super covered also. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to have something that mm-hmm. made me less of an object and more, like, I guess, artistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Artistic and pretty and role model without having the just like, oh, hey, look at my ass or whatever. <laughs> you don't want to and so sex I hate music life. that talks about that because, I know, it's upsetting to me to think yeah. that um, these guys who probably have, like, daughters and mm-hmm. stuff are objectifying women who you know when their kids grow up they're gonna be like dad but you said that thing yeah <laughs> actually a lot of them do go through that mm-hmm. yeah. i know i've known people that that did that when they were in their 20s you know and then they they, they talked about all that nasty stuff and they have kids now yeah grown, and now they're like you know, yeah hey honey, kids. honey don't watch that mm-hmm. <laughs> and sometimes yep. they just they, they actually are honest with them they just let them listen to it and tell them look this was your daddy back when I was a kid and I did but this. But see, it's know? hard to say, hey, that was me, but don't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right? Because yeah. then they're going to be like, hey, dad, but you you were talking about smoking joints. What's wrong with me smoking <laughs> joints? Right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. You know, that's what they yeah. also say. Like, they, they do say stuff about, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you got the, they got kids now grown, you know, they're in high school now. So they try to tell them, look, do it. If you're going to do it, be honest with me. Yeah. And so they try to educate them because mm-hmm. they, they, their parents didn't do that to them. So now in their in their older lives, they're like, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with my kids. Yeah, you know. You think a father out there, like, really being honest with their kid, be like, hey, I was really into Sir Mix a lot, <laughs> and your mom just had it. So if it wasn't for Sir Mix a lot, you wouldn't be around. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you see, so it's full circle. Uh, yeah. And then they meet him one day and they tell him that's that story. A real, that's a real thing too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you sing about them? If it's nothing, uh, Sir Mix a lot. Really, I kind of am just a sucker for love songs. Um, I really like cheesy shit. Like, yeah, it's either 
breakup songs or like I'm really upset with my boyfriend kind of songs that don't necessarily say that in those words but that's kind of the idea mm-hmm. or like I'm just super in love and it's because I'm a little bit bipolar when it comes to our relationship <laughs> I'm either like super oh my god I'm so in love <laughs> and if I go to write with somebody then that's what happens a perfect example I went to write with a friend the other day and he started this you know he started some chords whatever mm-hmm. and we're like oh I have a great idea at the same time, we kind of said that. And he was like, okay, I'm going to write mine and you write yours at the same time. Oh. His was depressing. Like, super, super a sad breakup kind of whatever song. And mine was like, like about getting married. <laughs> <laughs> the paradox. So, yeah, so. so I was like, okay, well, clearly this is like, even though the chords lent to a maybe sadder mm-hmm. song, my, it just wasn't happening because I was so happy. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't write a sad song. I was too happy. And then you have, like, simple rhythm where I went to work with the producer that day. He had his guitar. He picked it up. I was pissed with my boyfriend. And I started writing, like, a kind of jaded, how it used to be kind of relationship Mm -hmm. song. So it it, really just depends on on my real life stuff. And then sometimes I sing other people's stuff and I don't care what's it about. I really like to, um, no, what? What's it about? What, mm-hmm. what it's about? Yeah, um, I really like the idea right now that I'm exploring of playing with um, what it's like to date an artist. We're working on a song right uh, about Hello. that right now because I think it's a fascinating thing. Like mm-hmm. dating an artist is such a dynamic mm-hmm. thing. For example, they're always singing about somebody else, and you have to just kind of know that and accept that. Mm-hmm. And I think that would be difficult for me. Or I don't know. They're they're not necessarily always there. Or they're talking about your relationship live, like something, mm, something that you, you're exposing your relationship, something yeah. that you've shared so intimately and that maybe for you is mm-hmm. only between two people for them is mm-hmm. it, it's see, a tour it, subject. Yeah. Cause <laughs> like, he, he can make a lot of money in it because of you. And then you, you won't be, you won't be mad after that. You'd be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I made him. <laughs> I made uh, okay. This is, yeah, this is a good perspective. See, okay. there you I'll, go. I'll, see, I'll so, have to rethink uh, it. Yeah, I'll have to rethink so, my lyrics. So piss him off. But yeah, I mean, I, I sing about everything, I guess. Except for bitches and hoes. I don't really sing about bitches and You should <laughs> sing something against yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It might be, you know. Be the opposing voice to that. You know, you should make an acronym, you know, every every word and make it a positive. Uh, okay, I'll work on this. So, bah. Bitches and hoes. <laughs> there, <is. laughs> there it is. <laughs> like, this song is called Bah. <laughs> So actually, because I speak French, I have a lot of Arabic people contact me to do um, like collabs. Oh, mm-hmm. And there was one recently. He sent his video, and it was super like druggy. I don't understand Arabic, so it, they just wanted me to do a hook in French. Right? But I'm watching this video. I'm like, oh my god, I don't want my name on that. And so I mean, I have that kind of issue sometimes where I think, oh mm-hmm. yeah, it's a cool song, but yeah. I definitely don't want to be in that video. You need a pseudo name. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was to say. You get an alias, you know, just. Yeah, yeah, I totally. I, I use Elaine Brackett as my name. It's my my mm-hmm. name name. So gotta be careful. With need that. to use like Ele or something. You know? <laughs> something different. You know. Elaninish. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Call yourself. Yeah, some ba. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, don't, I have a lot of fake names. If it's only for me, it would be bitch and ho then. No. All, all wrapped in one. No, 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 no <laughs> You're no, against no. it, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, I know, but you just made my name Ba. <laughs> no, that's why I like Ba. Then, kind of like a vampire, a French vampire. Ba. <laughs> Damn, that's kind of like my name. You know that? Yeah, Ba. Yeah, there there it is. <laughs> What's the G.O. for? I'm on the go. <laughs> Grow over there, dude. <laughs> I'm Bitch, on the go. Bitches, bitches and, and hoes on the go. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, I said it right there. There I go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. See? It's, it's get over it. There you go. Get over it. <laughs> Bitches and holes get over it. Nice. There it is, dude. I like that better. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make stickers. Bah. <laughs> get over it. We're turning on her stickers now. See, she's gonna go home Can tonight. Can you explain the sticker obsession? Because I really I don't get it. I don't get stickers. It's kind of a ghetto thing for us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because like oh. I didn't like tagging <laughs> but I love putting up stickers tagging wait, 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 what's tagging tagging is like writing oh, on walls man. and graffiti yeah. oh yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. he's a he's a street writer yeah I have the, yeah. So he's gonna have yeah. that. He's gonna have that talk so, with his kids. So my kids like, are gonna hey. have a lot of things to hear about me because they're gonna hear from everybody but me. Then find out you have to break down to them. Be like, I sit down. I gotta tell you something. So like, what kind of stuff? Graffiti. But like, like uh, murals. Name. Murals. My name. Mm-hmm. You know, I did. I did. I did street graffiti. You know, I did 
you know, walls, freeways, buses, trains. That's I, I he never put his real I mean, name off. <laughs> I'm not condoning it, but no, I think of course, it's super cool. <laughs> but see, when we were kids, that's that's what I did. You know? See, yeah. it's, it's bad for him to do it, but when it comes down to Bansky and stuff like that, then it's great. Yeah, you know, right? you know. So do you like normal art as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a painter. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. I make I mean, I'm a, yep. I'm a designer also, so yeah. graphic designer and painter. Mm-hmm. But my roots come from graffiti. That's really cool. He's the one that does yeah, like it, my stuff. It's kind of yeah. like you have it in your blood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I make money out of it. You know, it's, He's yeah. not hanging I from freeway me. signs anymore, dude. No, I don't do it anymore. No. <laughs> I mean, I admire it still, though. I mean, when driving down the street and I see that stuff on the free, I love it. I still hang around with friends that do it. You know? yeah. I but I mean, safe. personally, I don't do it anymore. I just put up on the walls or, or you know, anything with the, my phones, the things on the wall. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> they don't have those anymore, huh? What are you doing? Pay phones? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, You're like, God. wait, <laughs> phone. No, it's, it's like every time you see the sign on it, it says phone. Yeah, dude, yeah. I want to get one from in here. I would love to have one. Oh, yeah, seriously, yeah, that's phone. a bad phone. Yeah, man. Oh, my I friend bought me a tape the other day. And oh, nice. So she's 81. She's totally my oh. bestie, wow. my home girl. But she brought me a tape, and she was like, "Hey, I just thought maybe you'd be interested in this." And I was like, "Hey, I don't." know what to do with that <laughs> i have nothing to play that in and she was like well i mean what about your car and i was like i d- i've never owned a car that had a tape player but i did <laughs> wow <laughs> we're aging yeah, he, i got yeah. a bunch of cassettes and he brought a player one day and he goes hey look what i found so I'm like all excited. I haven't heard some of these tapes in forever, and then it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So I have a bunch of cassettes sitting was, in there. It was it. <laughs> it hadn't played it in so long, so when I brought it, I, you know, I, I, didn't, know. I didn't know it didn't work. <laughs> I miss cassettes, though, because it gave you something to do, like flip the cassette over and play the next yeah, side. Yeah. And that you was know, cool the thing. number two pencil yeah. was your friend. Yes. I do remember when I was little, little, like making mixtapes off of radio songs. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I, I, still, I still have some of those yeah. tapes, yeah. Did you ever have a Teddy Ruxpin? I don't know what that means. It's a, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> they make them now, but they're MP3. <laughs> yeah. So the gentlemen that have asked my age, which I think is a really big football, but uh, I'm not going to ask their age. Yeah, gentlemen, we don't, we don't ask ages. <laughs> we were born in the 70s. Man. Yeah, we were born in the 70s. Wow. I didn't know Raised that. in the 80s, yep. party in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Good era. You miss a good okay. era, by the way. Apparently, sure makes a lot. <laughs> That's why there was a baby boom, dude. There no, you go. I don't even know who that is. What? I don't know who that is. Okay. It's the guy who sings, I like big butts and I cannot lie. A boom? No. No, I know this. Yeah, there he is. You know the video. If you look the video of it, you'll see it. Um, okay, I'm just going to admit, we learned a twerk routine to this. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Sweating to the oldies, dude. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's played everywhere, listen, though. What happens when you do aerial is that yeah. you have to, like, do something to weigh out your bottom of your body because my upper body is super strong, but I do nothing with my lower body. So what is like this? Twigs. What is, uh, I'm very oblivious about this, so aerial, so let's uh, explain to okay. people what this is so, in case some people don't know. Okay, so basically, it's there's several different types of apparatus, but I do aerial silks. So it's like two silks that hang from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Some people compare it to curtains. I was about to say that. Uh, right, oh, whatever. Okay. Like, like you're to like spinning around. So you're like around. swinging from the curtains. This That's is how a lot of people say it. Yeah. Oh, so it's okay, called okay. aerial awesome, fabrics dude. in I've some seen places. That. Aerial silks. Um, and then there's like trapeze. Uh, there's lira. I pronounce it lyra. Everybody else says lira. I'm going to go with the the popular vote how do you say it in portuguese i don't even know is it like a gyro gyro yeah i I, yeah i guess it's like that (laughs) but most of the girls say lira but it's basically a a, well not basically it is a steel hoop wrapped in tape and you do moves on it and then there's hammock which is like silks Mm -hmm. it's made out of the same fabric Mm -hmm. except for instead of being two that fall to the ground they connect just like a hammock so you can do it mm. open or you can do it closed so that it's like more thin, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's my favorite, actually, is hammock. I think that you can do more stuff without getting absolutely exhausted. Uh, but, but what happened is I went, I was doing a, a music video that hasn't been released because I haven't finished the song. But I was doing a music video with a dancer that I respect very, very much, Evo Vieira. And I kind of have never worked out in my life. So I was mm. like, okay, uh, I'm going to go to bar classes, right? trendy bar classes in california right <laughs> so i did a month of this and at the studio there's aerialists because they do aerial pole and bar 
And I thought, oh, I'll do that for like a month. And then I'll be able to do a music video. Mm -mm. Turns out <laughs> I couldn't even do like a pull up. So, and obviously, I mean, you're hanging in the air for a long wow. time and your grip has to be really strong, whatever. So it's been like, this will be my ninth month of doing it now wow. with a couple of breaks in between. And I do it six times. A week. So you have to have like really strong legs too, right? Because you're up there. I've seen them where they spin and they but just see, like. But see, not really. It's, like it's very... mainly your abs and your arms and you have to do stuff outside of aerial mm -hmm. to keep your wow. legs in shape because otherwise you don't. I mean, they're just dangling there. You ever tried break dancing? No. <laughs> <laughs> don't work out your legs. <laughs> <laughs> is it your legs? Yeah, I thought that was more It's awkward. everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. But your legs are doing a lot of work. Yeah, okay, yeah. so this will be my forward. extracurricular activity yeah, in the future, baby. Yeah. Try You got to do it just for a mix a lot. <laughs> <laughs> baby got legs. <laughs> Dude, I seen her do it. I'm like, dude, I don't know how they do that. It's it's actually pretty amazing. I'm like, yes. wow, that's pretty badass. It is. And man. then the funny thing is that you're saying that you don't like singing anything sexualized. <laughs> Feel. Dude, have oh, you? Wow. She's all cut. I'm like, she wow. turned her like. Damn. I just felt her <laughs> shoulders, <laughs> people, and it's. I, it, it felt solid. like solid. Yeah, just solid. <laughs> I thought she, she had a she, wallet she in might there. Be or something. A robot, she have, did you have a wallet on top right there or something? <laughs> you she, have wallet on she, she might be a nothing. robot, dude. I think it is, yeah. She's not beating. I was getting a manicure yesterday <laughs> with my little old lady friend. And the the Thai lady, she has she's doing the massage for my hands and my forearms. Mm. And she starts pointing and like tapping on them and then she yells in Thai to everybody, she tells me afterward. She's so strong. She's so strong. I'm like, hey, hey, keep it down, keep it down. <laughs> you don't know Thai, do you? No, no but you, okay. But I think I sometimes because you know a lot Thai of languages. people speak. Uh, they they speak French oh, often. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, sorry, not Thai. Vietnamese. Oh my Vietnamese, god. Vietnamese. Yeah. French Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Sorry, we had a conversation about Thailand while I was there. I apologize for the mistake. There's some, there's some but, Thais, though. Yeah, but Vietnamese specifically speak mm -hmm. a lot of French. Yeah. Oh wow. I didn't know French that. Vietnam War. Yeah, they learn French when they're kids in school. And yeah. Stuff. There's a, like, community here, a huge community, and they hire me to sing for stuff. So oh, really? This is kind of <clears throat> part of why I know that. Wow. Because the first time that they asked me, I was like, what mm -hmm. the? <laughs> what did they want? Was it down wow. right here in Garden Grove somewhere? Uh, no, Seal Beach. Isn't oh, that crazy, her. though, how music does that? Like, you know, it takes you there. Mm -hmm. You know, you oh, were yeah. there. Like, you just, you travel with it without even knowing. Some people invite you just because of that. You see, I never yeah. would have done that. You know, if I don't know this, so maybe if I would have known that hey i would have been yeah. uh, that kind of artist <laughs> yeah right <Yeah. laughs> there's djs that just cater to their music over there dude yeah it's pretty i, I think it's universal that's cool yeah it should uh -huh. work out what do you really like singing pop music <laughs> pop be more I specific really, i like music. pop music I, okay so my voice tends to lend itself more to classical music mm -hmm. um uh, the first language i ever sang actually the first thing i ever really sang i guess was italian i don't speak italian but I had this weird obsession with Italy when I was a little kid. Don't know where it came from. Um, and it was like classical mm -hmm. arias. So yes. that was the first. I have like a Disney princess voice. <laughs> <laughs> or I can. I mean, the, the most natural, <laughs> easy thing for me to sing is that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I like classical. But yeah, pop music. I really like singing pop music. And Anybody in specific? Yeah. Uh, I was about to ask you that. Well, not like American artists. So much. I really like uh, Andila. I heard her. Yeah. It's a Explain. French artist. Yeah. It's just, I mean, she she sings French. Give with us like, a sample. Uh, we need a beat. Oh, my dear France, pourquoi ça chante recommence? Oh, my dear France, je crame le ciel de jour la nuit. Je danse avec avant la pluie, un peu d'amour, un brin de miel et je danse, 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 danse. Like that kind wow. of, you know, flowy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was, was nice. That was what does nice. that translate to? I haven't sung that in maybe a year. But, um, <laughs> what does that translate to? What, what did you sing? Putain. <laughs> it's, too, it's too much for me to to give you. I just but, heard dance, dance, yeah, dance, dance. It's not just, baby, it's not baby got back. No. <laughs> no, I actually sing that song for uh, Kurt Russell. Really? Wow. Random, random, random. I have a friend who's a chef to, chef in uh, OC, mm -hmm. and they needed like some kind of special thing to give their table, and so they brought me. <laughs> oh, so you're the special thing. <laughs> yeah, nice. it, was, it was cool. It was cool. Acapella, that nice. and La Vie en Rose. 
Uh, but yeah, I like that kind of music a lot. Um, Christine and the Queens, also a French artist. I think that she's fantastic. Hmm. Um, she's very artistic. She actually started her career with theater. Really? And so she's a little bit more about the acting part, which is the hardest really? part for mm -hmm. me. For me, like live performance is definitely the hardest thing because I'm not used to it. It's mm -hmm. not really my... Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever. After this podcast, you better get used to it because you're gonna blow up. Do you ever do like any kind of like, electronic kind of music, but slow? Uh, not really. I've done yeah. a little bit of like hooks for <clears throat> people, <clears throat> um, but just like session work. I've never collaborated with that kind of thing. I'd love to. I like doing all sorts of stuff. Like it's fun <clears throat> for me to hear my voice on different kinds of tracks. Well, you came to the right place. <laughs> Yeah, I, like dance music, for example. It's mm -hmm. nice to have a cool hook on something like yeah. that or whatever. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of country music. Oh. And so I have That's good. maybe influences from that. Just yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah, people will be surprised. But I, 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 I don't know. For some reason, I got into it for a while because my co used to play it a lot. Yeah. At first, like everybody's like, what are you playing? What are you playing? Yeah, but people are really weird. They have the weirdest stigmas mm -hmm. about country music. Yeah. But I think one what people. I like about it, <laughs> I what I like about it is that you usually tell full stories. Yes. Like a lot of music now, it's just a bunch of bullshit lyrics <laughs> that don't really mean anything. And I, I like the fact that with country music, you typically can go from A B to C. Yeah, it's kind of like blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I grew up with a lot of Eric Clapton. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Like, I will my hat to that. Like, <laughs> Eric Clapton. <laughs> yeah. One of the Love first that papers that I wrote when I was a kid uh, was was a paper on him. They they asked us to write about our hero, and I wrote about Eric Clapton. Wow. Oh, damn. And I had to Shout have... Out. Wow. <laughs> Shout nice. out Eric Clapton. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> it's a new tag. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have, like, a little section, though, explaining that... Yes, even though he was a drug addict, <laughs> who was <it? laughs> with all these issues, blah blah blah. Really? <laughs> he's still my hero. Like I had to have that that little explanation. <laughs> no, who was it back then? Though, come on, I mean, seventies. Oh, right. He's yeah. like back then, the drugs added to the music. Yeah, it was normal. You had to do it. How much music would not be around if it wasn't for drugs back then? <sighs> not a lot. I mean, I not think, to me. I don't think a lot of music, a lot of careers wouldn't be around yeah. if it wasn't for drugs. Look, like, I don't Very want to true. name a lot of people, but. Very true. I think it would still be around. I just think it would be different. It's probably still around. I mean, Jerry, no, I mean, Gar Jerry I mean, Garcia like, would not be around. People would have probably still written. It just wouldn't have been the same. I think it was a, it was more of a movement, you know? You weren't part of that movement, so you reached out to those types of people. Uh, so yeah, it, it, gave, yeah. it gave you more more freedom to do that kind of... And to, like, write about cocaine. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, he what's had a song. Cocaine. What's the name of that again? <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's normal. <laughs> Not that I've... I don't want to condone anything like that, but yeah, you know... Was, no, we only condone Schneeberg here. There you go. Remember yeah, that? Schneeberg. Schneeberg. Yeah, oh, I, heard oh. it I don't know what that means. <laughs> It's a uh, um, it's a German party favor. Yeah, it's not a drug. It's, not it's a drug. powdered sugar with uh, menthol in it, and you snort it like cocaine. It kind of keeps you up like cocaine, but it's not cocaine. But why would you do that? When I went to, uh, <laughs> we said this story a hundred times. Like, don't you have anything better to do in your life? Well, I was very drunk at Oktoberfest. <laughs> okay. And this French girl, same thing, beautiful. She sounded gorgeous. You know, she had a beautiful voice. She was try it, you know, in, in French. And then she had this big old line of white stuff on there. I'm like, what is that? She goes, Elle a dit, le. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just took me back. Like, dude, I want a line of Schneeberg now. <laughs> No. Go get it, man. Go get it. Not condoning this. You gotta go get it. No, we do. She hasn't heard the. She hasn't. She hasn't heard the podcast. I mean, she hasn't heard the podcast. Oh, uh oh. She's heard little tiny bits. But okay. Let's. Okay. Here's what's up. I don't have the attention span to do anything. I don't own a television. I haven't owned a television since I was 17. What? Yeah. My parents have like several in their house, and every time I go, I'm like, uh, yeah, not for me. I just that's good though that's honestly yeah for, uh, if I'm going to watch something I mm -hmm. prefer it to not be in English occasionally I'll go to the theater and I'll like watch something mm -hmm. like a film that's really popular or that I really wanted to see but it's rare and at home I don't watch TV hmm. that's not that's, that's not rare that's that's cool. I know people like that yeah, yeah. I, know, I have artistic. the problem with yeah. my like my attention span yeah. I'll mm -hmm. be watching something and be like oh my god wait I could be doing that or, you know, 10 minutes in, I think about all these other things that I could mm -hmm. be doing that are yes. way more interesting than watching somebody else doing something. Exactly. I get really annoyed watching somebody else's life. I, like, exactly I just want to create my own. I what you mean. So if I put a TV I on right now, you might try Schneeberg. 
I might just pass out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I always, when I used to watch TV, like, I don't watch that much. I every now and then now, but I used to consider it a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It absolutely. And I'm, I'm sure there's some great stuff on TV. I just would You're not rather missing not out. watch sometimes, it. Sometimes I actually watch it for inspiration. Yeah, I can, mm-hmm. but that's what I mean. Like, yeah. I'll be watching it and that's I can't it finish yep. a film because I'm like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Wait, look, I'm a big documentary. I, I love documentaries. Yeah. Same. But so. documentaries in Portuguese are French. Because, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, yes. it's kind of like multitasking. Like, exactly. oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to learn something. I'm yeah. going to learn it in another language. See? So, Schneeberg. Schneeberg. <laughs> so, Schneeberg. <laughs> it's been a while since I did it. Yeah, it's not bad for you it's at not. all. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's seriously math folding. It, it sounds just super it, unnecessary. <laughs> no, it wakes you up. It just, it, it kind of just clears your sinuses out. You ever had menthol, like that gum? It's like menthol the gum? Yeah, yeah. Okay, think that's about all it that is. all in your nose. I actually form. have like a honey right now that has menthol. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what it is, honestly. It's just a big stick powder form. Random. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. but the, what that's, time, that's uh, why she yeah because uh, you know like some singers you know they can't sleep mm-hmm. they try it hey i'm sorry if they they're, they're sleepy and they want to sing and they just throw some fever up and mm-hmm. actually that's leading me to my next question when do you like writing music what time of the day day or night mm, in the middle of the day is usually when i've come up with stuff because i'm not i'm not the kind of person that like sits down and says i'm gonna write a song today it's usually just something pops in my mind i'm like oh shit i have to write that down or I just wrote a song the other day with a friend who it's called Circus Boy um, and I had gone backstage to Cirque du Soleil and nice. I was super inspired like all I wanted to do was do circus stuff and then the week before I had gone to an aerial performance and it was one of those things that I got my cocktail and I'm watching them and all I wanted to do was like slowly put my cocktail back down and go back to the gym <laughs> and train right because I yeah, thought yeah, oh my yeah. god I, I'll never be that good. I want to be that good. <laughs> and so I had all these things in my head, and we wrote it in, like, two hours, the song. But it's in the afternoon. I I really like sunlight. Oh, not, okay. Not for sunlight to touch my skin. <laughs> <laughs> Super white girl, by the way. Um, but I really I like the daylight. Like, makes me kind of right. more mm-hmm. alert. Huh. I'm not really a night person. No. No, sometimes I am just because my life ends up being that way. Like, mm-hmm. because things happen at night. Yeah. But if I could sleep when it's dark and be awake when it was light that'd mm-hmm. be great i'm not the kind of person that wants to be awake till three in the morning before in the morning it, hmm. i'm not as creative yeah i'm, I'm the opposite <laughs> yeah the night. Night. I've, uh, most artists yeah. are, are night people yeah like I, i'm my it's everything starts it's like for music if i'm ever gonna do it 11 27 is probably the best time to start <laughs> Nah, he's not joking. That's so specific. <laughs> Eleven twenty-seven. Okay, I see. Guys, so my favorite you guys number is <laughs> zero zero zero. Uh, <laughs> hack, it, hack everything right now, guys. <laughs> Going to that click up podcast. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm a night owl. I cannot sleep during the night. I've always been like that. Yeah, I went to sleep at two thirty-seven last night. Probably, I was making some music and yep. it was very. It was like I I only sleep like four to five hours a night, maybe. I go. I'll go crazy. Man. I don't sleep a lot, but I really don't function without it very well either. But you I can't think write, you can't write music when you're just tired, like. No, I just get know? grumpy. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you might be a grumpy song. See the breakup songs, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know, huh? Not going the right way. <laughs> People be like going through the album, like, okay, she must have written this one late. There you go. This one was in the middle of the day. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's why I write like happy love songs. There it is. That's what it is. It's there all it sunshine. Is. Okay, so don't sleep. Yeah. Don't sleep for like three days and see what kind of music you write i'm actually about to adjust my my time clock right now because i'm going to portugal for a month and so what i will do is the next few days every day i'll wake up an hour early and mm. earlier and sleep an hour earlier yeah, just right. to start well, to yeah. write a song see what happens mm. right, right. Like, yeah. but i think for me if i get home late then i i get super excited in my car that's mm-hmm. usually where i feel really inspired is in my car i'm mm. suddenly like a pop star right by yourself and then with your thoughts by myself with my thoughts and then when mm-hmm. i get home and i have my mic ready and whatever i'm like oh god i'm just so tired mm-hmm. <laughs> or oh god i'm just so hungry or i'm so whatever and i usually don't end up doing anything at night whereas in the morning when mm-hmm. i haven't had time for the whole rest of the day to sink in i'm still fresh and i, I can still I, and I dream a lot. Oh my god, craziest, most ridiculous, vivid dreams, and I think that helps me to want to write things yeah. as well. It that that, me that helps me to paint. I've actually oh, woken up to right when I woke up. I remember I dreamt something, and I I had to paint what I dreamt. 
Yeah. I got a bam, boom, rest Oh, that's so mm-hmm. beautiful. I would love to be able to do it. Yeah, I'll do notes or like <laughs> notes. Is that, are you serious? That's I am it. not joking. This was a dream of mine. I woke up and I started drawing this I am right looking away. at a dra- Two drawing. Two flying pigs. Drawing of flying pigs mm-hmm. and then pigs doing all sorts of absolutely obscenely crazy things on the, the ground. The aliens they're are happy mo- that... Wait a minute. The they're aliens? happy that the aliens are invading the humans. And you see, they're not so happy. And they're puppets. Yep. That's actually a tattoo on my back. I cannot believe how many characters are in this photo. Oh, this is like this You, could, you could look at that thing and there's always going to be things you're not going to notice. Yeah, I looked at it for like three... How actually, long did that like take my, you? Uh, honestly, two hours. And I bet you you did it all at one sitting. All at one sitting. Yeah, you have to. You can't I, I had stop. to get out of my head. Yeah. That's what it is when you I start I had that painting. tattoo on my back. Not the whole thing, but the the flying pigs, but also the pu- a puppeteer of a businessman with no face. I can't draw stick figures, so kudos to both of you. Let's we'll see you, you, your artists. Yeah, you, 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 you express it in different yeah. ways. Yeah. And that's what thing our artists do. They just express in different yeah. ways. I get inspired mm-hmm. by music. I listen yep. to a lyric, and I was like, oh. Visually, I just start painting it. I can see I, that. I have, I have titles of my paintings based on songs. Oh, okay. It get, it, it's mm-hmm. one of the reasons I learned dance, I guess, is because it's just a different way to express things yeah. that you can't. Because mm-hmm. I'm not really good at writing lyrics. They happen sometimes, mm-hmm. like happy accidents, but I'm not I'm not really a lyricist. What's one of your favorite lyrics? Ugh. <sighs> Ugh. <sighs> God, he has so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this a We're podcast? Here. Where are y'all? <laughs> we, we, got, we got a couple. couple one, one of my favorite lyrics ever or one of my favorite lyrics? Of, yours. Personally yours. I, mean, I don't have that many. What's like when you're like, a six year head, like just, uh, you want to expand on? The first thing that comes to my head is simple rhythm and the bass of the heartbeat. It's so basic, but it's the, mm-hmm. it's the hook of my song right now. <laughs> simple rhythm and the bass of the heartbeat. You got to hear it. It's pretty good. It's still not done yet. I'm having issues with the, the rhythm. I I have a very hard time explaining to people what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. And so this song in particular. Oh. <laughs> this song, I tried to explain a beat. And what happened with what the producer gave me was nothing with what I was hoping for. Should I, should I bust that around right now? Go for it. Don't sing. I like big. How but- do I sing to that? Speed up a little bit. There it is. Sing about the pain. <laughs> I wouldn't ever do lyrics live like that. Why? Because of. Es que je perfectionniste. There it is. There it is. Okay, we're starting. I'm too perfectionist. I would come up with some like bullshit thing, and then I'd be really annoyed by it later. Nah, I'll be fine. We won't. We won't play it. <laughs> That's why simple rhythm has been in the making for a whole year. No, but that was good though. Really that was. I like that. See, I like, I like rhythm. I like just mm-hmm. having just the humming. Just flow it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I love that. That's, that's how it starts. Actually, mm-hmm. from that starts everything. Mm-hmm. Just throw a rhythm. Yeah, for me, it's been different though. I, some songs have started because I have a lyric first. Some start because someone gives me a beat. Right. Some, you know, all of them are different, which is which makes it fun. It makes yeah. it interesting. And that's what actually, I've I know people that actually don't they don't have a an actual style or way of doing things. Things just happen. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, I mean a little bit right now. I every person that I write with, mm-hmm. my songs end up completely different. Mm-hmm. It's not like. I mean, my voice, I, I have my voice box, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it can only change so much. Mm-hmm. But the style of songs, I guess they change a little bit depending on who's giving me the chords or um, what kind of beat they give me. Mm-hmm. It's always a little bit different. What's your Which favorite instrument? Fun. Like to actually... Piano. I, piano? I don't, I don't play. Really? I've just barely, barely started playing with guitar a little bit. And I, like, I can play the basics on a piano. Very, very, mm-hmm. very, very, very basic. Uh, but piano is my... Well, mm, yeah, piano's my favorite, and then I really love cello. Oh, nice! But do do you um do you even play more than just no? I don't play. No, really. Mm-mm. Have you ever thought about it? Like you wanna what's sure. one of the instruments you would love to like just a guitar, just yeah. because it's simple to carry with you and whatever. I honestly, I didn't think I was intelligent enough to learn it, and then uh, a friend gave me her old one, mm. and I was. But it's a classical guitar, so mm. I ended up buying a different one. Oh, okay. Um, but this is in the last month or two mm. I bought it, and so I've d- I just put a little parlor guitar, mm. so it's nice. Like it's not too difficult nice. for my for my little hands, whatever. Um, but I would really like to be able to accompany myself. It, 
I love playing with another person, but when you're traveling and whatever, it's really hard sometimes to find a, a guitarist. And mm-hmm. so sometimes I don't do a live show because I don't have the instrumentalist, and I don't like being limited like that. So I would really like to learn guitar. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we got far. we got some people here in the in the podcast that very talented guitar players. Maybe one day you might, you know. Yeah, maybe one of one of a, one of these guys probably will teach you some. Yeah. Cool stuff. Danny and Shy Dog. Yeah. They're all perfect. See? Perfect. The thing is, we guitar have. is easier than I thought. So, it, like, yes, if somebody can show me some of the basics, whatever. YouTube, I get really bored. Everybody says, oh, just learn on YouTube. But uh, it's not that easy to just learn on YouTube. Second because round. then I have yep. to have the attention span. I, I really <laughs> need somebody there to just say, okay, do this, do this. But it's way easier than I mm-hmm. thought it was. That's why I can never play bass. I can never pay attention. Like, every, yeah. every teach me, like, do this. I'm like, I start digging, like... Pigs, flying right, pigs. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I can't concentrate like that either. But I think either. also having some kind of sequence. Because what happens with YouTube is you're like, oh, my God. Look at all these thousands of videos that I yeah. can watch. Yeah. And then it's hard to get into like a, you know, like Anything in university, specific. they give you a syllabus. And you follow that syllabus. And you learn that way. And I think that's maybe more my learning style. I need mm-hmm. someone to say, this week you're going to play C, D, and G. Mm-hmm. Next week you're going to play blah, blah, blah. And then that way I can mm-hmm. I can have some curriculum, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a funny thing, like Shy Dog and Danny. Um, Danny, uh, he's part of a trio, uh, ensemble. Yeah. And just listen to these guys, you know, play back and forth. Mm-hmm. And it's it's, it's it's amazing. So I'm like, I'm always thinking, like, you'll be perfect for them. But you gotta check these guys out. So like, guitar they're ensemble, amazing. they're good. They're amazing. Classic, like, I mean, they they're playing Bach. Yeah, they're you're playing telling me you like classical. Stuff. Yeah. That'll that'll yeah, be perfect. Like you love it. We can play at the airport. There it is. I love the airport. So if you guys are listening out there, there you go. <laughs> All right, back to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cute. <laughs> the turn of the. So page. when I sang at the airport, though, I had a I had a car accident on the way there. I was mm. picking up my speaker, and it was a pretty bad one. <laughs> Got a concussion, blah blah blah. Wow. But I still went, still went and sang. I think there's a trend here. <laughs> you mean the right side of my face and the left side of my face? <laughs> no, I'm saying like every time you go to go some kind of performance with a microphone. You know, <laughs> right, hey, right. Is. Be careful <laughs> maybe, now. maybe it's my way of saying that I'm nervous. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Um, yes. What did your What did your parents listen to? What kind of music did they listen to before? Uh, so yeah, like I said, a lot of Eric Clapton, um, Al Green. <laughs> wow, there's where that soul comes from. Uh, a lot of country, but not. I think country was more my thing. Let's see, what did mom and dad listen to? I don't know, oldies. I call them all oldies, but I don't know. Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> <laughs> did they influence you? Like, did they were they a big supporter? Um, they were supportive in ways, but also they were kind of just dis- disinterested. When you have seven other siblings, then it's kind of right. I mean, everybody's yeah. got their own thing going, and like everybody's always busy, and everybody's always whatever. I have a very traditional family, so it mm-hmm. was more like you know, married, have kids, blah blah blah, and so singing definitely wasn't like a normal career path mm-hmm. um yeah that's all I, have to say about that yeah. I mean I, I can't say that they're super supportive in the way that they just didn't really pay attention mm. but i mean i love my parents to pieces they they're wonderful people but i think for them it's just kind of always on the side that said um my mother just a couple weeks ago she sent me a text message to say i just want you to know that your father listens to your music every day Wow! It's like, oh, that's wow. so cute. That's encouragement. But that's, that's a lot good. of encouragement. Yeah. They're just not that vocal about it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I think it's more like a quiet support. Like, mm-hmm. if I say, "Hey, I'm doing this thing," they're gonna be sweet yeah, and means, kind about yeah. it, but they're not necessarily gonna be super excited or whatever. But well, that, that's in the background. Though, they're you know? supporting. Yeah, yeah in the background, if they're listening to it, I guess mm-hmm. they have to be proud. Important. I mean, they're gonna be listening to it all the time. They have to be proud. That's that is sweet, though. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It. It was. So cute when I read that. I was so happy. <laughs> like, At the same time, like <laughs> I won't send aerial videos. I'll show something to my boyfriend, and he'll be like, "Don't send that to your mom, <laughs> right?" Like if I'm doing some kind of flip or some yeah, kind of crazy yeah, yeah. drop, then uh, he's like, "Don't send that to her. <laughs> She's uh, gonna have a heart attack." <laughs> what if I tried aerial? How much weight can those things support? I don't know how much weight we can go. Probably not two seventy. Sure. Because I'm amazed when I, I see that could. man. I, I my mouth dropped once dude, yeah, watching I know. that. Dude, yeah, I seen videos. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. Maneuvers, like, I wouldn't trust a curtain. Well, the thing <laughs> is, it depends on the the silk's thickness. Mm-hmm. 
Um, like my curtains here from Ikea. Do you think they'll work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> well, I guess it's more... The fabric is super strong. Do you mm-hmm. know that they have, like, um, circus acts? I guess it's just girls. I'm sure there are sometimes guys, mm-hmm. but they are held by their hair. Because I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that. And it's not like any kind of illusion. They're really yeah. just holding it by their hair yeah. because each strand can hold a lot of weight. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you think about your hair being able mm-hmm. to hold your body weight, then yes. So it's going to hold your body weight. I'll try with my beard. So, so and then of, beans so just IB. have to be strong enough, right? So a lot of ibuprofen after the show. <laughs> a lot of ibuprofen. <laughs> That's a headache, man. I can imagine. <laughs> I, I, I got a thing way back to us last time I had hair, dude. I mean, you have, it's, look, you could hang by your beard. And I was thinking that would be cool, like a, a circus act. <laughs> All I need is two midgets and a rope. And a rope. <laughs> you can come hanging. train with us. They'll be hanging right there. Actually, when I get back, I'm going to do a little bit of, um, I think it's called corde lisse or something like cord lisse. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, instead of being a fabric, it's going to be a rope. And I'm excited to try it. I, seems a little bit more painful but i don't know i've never tried it before how thick is the rope i don't know you know it'll be That's you know what's what's, what's one makes strong rope cannabis hemp oh that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah but is that it's scratchy too isn't it yeah. Well, that's, yeah i've done a little bit of trap bees when i was in mm-hmm. portugal and like lyra or lira whatever you say mm-hmm. um it's steel and then you have the tape and so when you rub up against it obviously it's not comfortable but the Trapeze has mm-hmm. rope on the side, and mm-hmm. I find that much less comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> see your hands? You have like calluses on your hands, or <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's... Oh yeah. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you can I see like the yellow. Pretty good. Wow. Pretty good calluses. So I used to get that when I, was, I used to ride bikes when I was a kid. I always had. Yeah. yeah this is the, the first day, time I had bikes, something like this. I always had calluses right here. Did it take a while? <laughs> yeah. Like, did you get blistered up? Mm, well, I didn't really do much lira until the last few weeks mm-hmm. <laughs> because I was training to do this little cover song. Um, but yeah, I mean, th- this happens just in a few weeks. Yeah, I used to get, and then I I used get, get real them. bad blisters from uh, playing baseball because the bats have that tape mm-hmm. on it too. Yeah. No, I've never had blisters. It really just huh. did. But the first time I ever took a trapeze class, um, it was in Portugal, and the <laughs> the one of the girls got a big gash right oh. there. And the teacher was like, it's fine, just put some chalk in it, let's go. I was like, what? <laughs> She's fucking bleeding. Like, suck it up, buttercup, yeah. and go. Yeah, exactly. It was really just like, okay, man up, let's go. Did she say it in Portuguese? She did. That probably sounds mean no, in Portuguese. No, he, he actually said it in English because we were half English oh, okay. speaking and half, half Portuguese speaking. It was a lot of Americans in that mm-hmm. class. I specifically asked him when he spoke to me to speak mm-hmm. in Portuguese just so that I could learn. Mm-hmm. But they would switch sometimes to English just because I think that they also want to practice. Yeah. Portuguese people tend to speak English very, very well. Really? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, they're a pretty small country and they mm-hmm. have a lot of tourists from, mm-hmm. from different places. A lot of them speak French very well and English. Hmm. Even the ones that say that they don't speak well See, still have. The funny thing is, surrounded by Mexicans where I grew up, mm-hmm. and my English teacher happened to be Portuguese. <laughs> so she would get mad at me because, like, get you guys this She's like, no, you say, because you are this <laughs> And I'm like, what? <laughs> and and I, she found me, Miss Lanusa. If, if you're still alive, I like to tell yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> happy. I'm happy Amen. for you, you're still alive. But, um, yeah, she failed me. My Spanish is not the greatest thing. So when I took my test, my Spanish test for um, my current employment, yeah, I, I got the only Portuguese speaking <laughs> uh, tester. And then she's all like, she and tells Portuguese me, or Brazilian? It's, it's Spanish, but it's Portuguese. She's Portuguese. But I'm like, nobody Portuguese. talks Portuguese over here. <laughs> I'm like, it's all Mexicans. <laughs> we talk dirty. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nasty. We don't talk proper Spanish. It is crazy, the difference yeah. in Spanish. When I started learning mm-hmm. Spanish, I decided to learn Colombian <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> this was the accent that I wanted. And so I went wait, to Colombia a few times. Wait, wait, wait. You wanted the Pablo Escobar? Ah, <laughs> uh, come on. It's musical sounding their accent. It's really beautiful. I actually met a guy in the street the first time, time I went down mm-hmm. there, and we ended up writing a song. That's on YouTube. Uh, Ritmo Kizomba. But uh, I didn't speak Spanish very well yet, and he didn't speak any English. 
but I managed to get my ideas across, and mm-hmm. <laughs> we wrote a song. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Yeah, it was fun. It's it was international fun. language. It just, yeah, you kind of use a little bit of your hands, and then you can so, show a little notes like this. You sing something, and you figure it out. It makes it so much more fun. Yeah, that if way. you use, use your hands over here, you may get shot. Oh, <laughs> what? Gang languages. What? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. Oh, yeah, we're by Long Beach. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you go like to where I'm from, yeah, you definitely get shot or stabbed. <laughs> you wake up on the when bus. When I was recording my my little routine today or my practice routine, there's ambulances in the background every freaking time. I'm like, or whatever it is. Where was it? At? Where was it? It's just behind the airport. It's oh, right by the hospital. It's down uh, Spring Street. Yeah, is that, that, that that's the <laughs> route? That's right. Yeah, that's it. I was yeah. just like, oh my god. What time was that? Was what that a like, dangerous place? Was that oh, like I did it two times today. <laughs> I did it once at five p.m. and I did it no for four fifteen. Once at okay. four fifteen until five, and then the other one was like ten this morning. Yeah, there was a traffic accident on Cherry and Spring Street. Oh my gosh! So oh like five gosh. people were transported. Ooh. Yeah, I'm listening to all the videos. I'm like, what? That's the weird. Heck? Spring and Cherry. Yeah, there's a bad accident. Dude. Ooh, that's not a light. Oh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, it's right by there. I right seen a yeah. very bad accident on Willow and Cherry. One's bad, bad. Or it was. Yeah, it was very. I won't tell you the ones I've like seen. Like a year ago, dude. it was very <laughs> nasty. It was just like five, six cars flipped and everything. Oh. I probably you guys probably heard about it about mm-hmm. a year ago. Yep, trust me. Yeah, I'm probably there. Yeah. Oh man, I got. There I won't say I was, but I probably was there. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I won't say it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're <laughs> you're right in the corner of the ambulances. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that explains everything. They they, like, oh they go down Spring Street. That's like the the corridor for all of them. The world, the, the world makes sense now. Yeah, I was just like, oh my god, Long Beach is like ghetto. <laughs> yeah, for people that like you know people from all around the world. Yeah. We're Long Beach people. We're near Long Beach and a lot of crazy... So what? Are, what's your ultimate goal in music then? Oh, God. That's actually a little bit complicated because it changes all the time. But right now... <laughs> you don't like crowds. <laughs> yeah, I don't so like crowds. I like big. small, intimate Wait, settings. You don't, so like, you don't like performing in big, big arenas and kind of thing? I, so well, I've never performed in an arena. No, like if they the most I've ever performed you. for is maybe a 1,000 people. I wouldn't know what to do. If they called yeah. me for a huge thing like that, I wouldn't know what to do. I mean, I guess I'd accept because you have to accept. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but I would be a little bit lost. So I really like when you can interact with the audience. Mm-hmm. Like you can have like that kind intimate, of... Like the intimate. Yeah, exactly. So... Right now, yeah, I mean, even, even up to a hundred, you can still make eye contact with people. Whatever, yeah. I don't just just not massive crowds. So, in this very moment, my idea is to make an album that is Cirque related. So I want to be able to have um, I want to be able to have aerialists mm-hmm. perform to the album, and I want world rhythms, specifically a lot of African stuff. Um, as far as my drum beats go and I also want classical elements so I would like cello and I would like piano and then I want to be able to do them live so I would like to have for example in the in the corner um, a pianist a singer a cellist and I don't one one other instrument maybe and then the apparatuses will be next to it so that the live music is playing at the same time as Uh you're having the performance um, That's nice. And I would like to have several dancers. So I mean, it's exhausting. You mm-hmm. can't just do aerial for a couple of hours. Yeah. It's just not a thing. And then have lights and stuff everywhere. Right. Yeah. It's just too much. So I would have like a small team of people. I mean, this is the idea, right? This could actually end up being nothing. But right now, with my training, this is kind of what I'm what I'm working toward and what I'm working toward writing. So I would like to tell a story. I would like the album to tell the story. And then to visually show it with the aerial acts. Mm, so and more then, like a concept album. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And mm. then to have um, some, also, it won't just be aerial. Some of it will be like floor work. Mm-hmm. So they'll do like small dances and then go up onto the apparatus. Um, I would like it to have guys and girls so that it can show like the love aspects and whatever. And yeah, this is this is right now what what my goal is musically. Uh, we'll, wow. we'll see where it goes. Wow. I don't know, I just picture like two a guy and a girl rolling that. down <clears throat> and then it opens up like into a scene. Shit. Yeah, I don't know, I just picture that. I was picturing it right now. I love that because I love all that stuff. Like, I, I went Japanese to the Circus water. Soleil in Vegas. Yeah. Man, I was amazed. You know, this I is the first circus that I ever went to in, like, uh, in January. Yeah. I had never been to the circus oh before. Oh, God. There's beautiful. Really? But we got invited backstage, and so, th- like, I ended up going two times, and you get to see just what a different world it is. I didn't realize. Mm. Like, they're sitting there training like it's no big deal before they go on. So they'll go <laughs> you hours be before. I Oh, my God. I'm watching them <laughs> thinking, like, right aren't there. you tired? Aren't you exhausted yet? <laughs> I mean, I feel like before a vocal performance, mm-hmm. I'm not sitting there singing, right? I'm nah. resting. Mm-hmm. And for them, they're, they're just 
It's nothing. They're running the whole act as though they're not going to do it again in 10 minutes, you know? Like, it's crazy. <laughs> those guys are built, man. Oh, yeah, I know. I've seen them. Man. They've flown out before. I've seen them. Bodybuilders, man. I went to go see Love uh, by the Beatles in yeah. Vegas. Oh, man. It's amazing. Yes. Wait, and some of them are very... It's uh, more toned, I would yeah. say. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of the women, it's, they could probably take any man. But oh, yeah, those guys it doesn't look crazy. Built. It, yeah. it, it just is very... It's practical muscles I think yeah, it is. it's yeah, useful yeah. muscles yeah. not like exactly, it's not exactly. bodybuilding like, yeah mob, like yeah. crazy like they pick them up and they do this oh whole yeah some turns. of the guys it's like huge like, wow, huge dude, muscles the other one is just tone yeah I've seen the one where the guys are like on each other oh, like yeah. that and yeah. it's like yeah. <laughs> I want to try you. that with Chris one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine, like, dude, I, we're going to die, dude. dude. I would love to Photoshop that. That would be amazing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do that, dude. We got to do that. <laughs> oh, we got to do it, man. That would be the funniest thing. And have her in the background, you know, like, you know, that would be nice. Well, it's funny because partner work adds just a whole other aspect to everything, <laughs> yeah. right? Because oh, yeah. when you're doing it by yourself, you're only trusting yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you're doing it with another person, you have to just hope that they're gonna hold on to you right like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was amazed man. My, my jaw dropped when I was watching just, that yeah oh, the so love, the just love watching it on the screen you're like wow that's crazy yes. I could just imagine live dude you yeah. guys should like hear yeah, everything serious. you know mm-hmm. and like they're so, the way they, they're slow too the way they do it like they're picking this yeah, guy up like this. Yeah, it's a lot like of this. control. They're doing this, man, and they're like real slow, and they're doing this, picking it. I'm sorry, people over, people listening to this. I'm putting my hands and going some crazy maneuvers. <laughs> <laughs> but they're really picking the guy up and the girl up on one hand, the other. They, but I mean, the strength. Dude, this hurts <laughs> me right here, dude. <laughs> Hibiki, <laughs> that's crazy. Have you um, speaking about like, do you do you what kind of concerts do you go? If you ever kind of concerts you like going to. Do I like going to? Yeah, we yeah. are. Small ones. Really, really small ones. I, Just my people. favorite one recently was um, in Lisbon. It's at Rua, uh, Rua des Pretos. See, see doesn't that sound a lot better than dude, you say? I, I went to the trip. I, 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 I went to the trip over there. You know, I she want to she go, <laughs> dude, out of nowhere. <laughs> Anyway, Rua de, de Spretas or something like that. I think she needs to introduce us because it's going to make people want to listen yeah. to us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, this place, it, it was just uh, maybe 30 people in the oh. audience. And it's kind of like a fireplace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've got all the people playing there. There's no, um, how do you say? Um, Sound? PA? Yeah, no PA. Oh. There's no PA. It's just some mm-hmm. it's really like, random instruments. They kind of will hit on something to make a, a drum drums. beat yeah. or like just random shit oh, that, wow. that makes the beats. And they'll have a few guitars. Um, sometimes they would like tap mm-hmm. a wine bottle to make some noise. Mm-hmm, um, the seating is just on little pillows and like again? wine um, mm-hmm. wine cases. It's in Lisbon, Portugal. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but it's one of my favorite places. I really love it. And I, I was lucky enough to sing there the second time. So I went as a guest the first night. Yeah. And then I ended up meeting the chefs that were there. And they added me on social media. And so the guy who runs it, um, Pierre, he found my website. And he was like, wait, you're a singer and you didn't even tell us. So, <laughs> so they invited me back to sing the next time. And it was just, it's just so beautiful because mm-hmm. uh, you're singing a cappella or you're singing with just you know a few instrumentalists you learn everything kind of on the spot mm. and it's just the same way that you would have a normal jam session in your house except mm-hmm. for you have a small audience that's badass it was really really yeah, those are like those intimate settings like are just great man it's like yeah. you can never replicate that Mm-mm. and then even the kind of people that end up coming to them because that place is kind of known for that mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. evening that they have every every week i believe yeah, they're all um, different <laughs> yeah it's always just people from all of the world so i got to meet uh diogo nogueira uh, who was a Brazilian talk show host and also a, a samba singer. Mm-hmm. Um, and through that, I got to meet Damas, who's a, like a Portuguese pop group. Mm-hmm. Just all sorts of people that I, I didn't That's even know crazy. who they were when yeah. I met them, right? Because I'm not Portuguese, I'm not Brazilian, but, you know, just... You look big, them up, you're uh, like, oh, They're wow. a big deal, yeah. right? But they have this intimate setting where they all just are people right and it's not like oh my god they're gods on this big concert <laughs> stage they're right no people. they're just regular people no, like singing those. singing without all the shit behind them that's and I like that. awesome little yeah. concert so that's my like favorite a, kind of concert i really like small yeah. concerts so if they were to call mm-hmm. you and say you just want tickets to go see so and so you'll probably probably give them away huh i mean if it's <laughs> if it's a festival yeah like yeah. i don't like festivals too many people 
too many lines, too many whatever, mm-hmm. like crowds where I have to kind of be pushed up against whatever. Mm. I just, I don't like it. I, I mean, mean, sure, it's cool every now and then, yeah, but not yeah. really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not really my favorite. All thing. right, so where do you go see Adele? Adele? Yeah, I mean, sure. All right, what about, what's the other? I don't even, I don't know anybody famous, really. <laughs> what's a... Um, Grande, Ari- Ariana Grande? No, no, I probably wouldn't know. Taylor <laughs> Swift. I respect her as an artist, but uh, I just I don't see myself going to that. Do you kind like of concert. artists more? Or do you like artists who uh, create their own stuff more than it's written for them? I don't really care. I don't care. Oh, who makes it. As long as they have a voice, good. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. As long as it's done well, I don't really care who made it. Did you listen to Portishead? <laughs> yes. Wait, the one that you sent me. Yeah. 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 I did listen. <laughs> Shit. I was like, like oh, probably How you like not. That stuff? It's good. It's cool. It's different, huh? Yeah, I like the way that they make the sound. Sounds yeah. kind of like old. Mm-hmm. Very, yeah. Very sonic. Yeah. yeah. Very sonic loose. Yeah, she day. to me, she's like one of the top of the line singers for me. Yeah. Just background, I just and like one of the other singers I really like is um, God. I always uh, the Cranberries. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Another Cranberries and then uh, the Cardigans. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to say I like the Cardigans. <laughs> hey, man. Love they're good. They, I like that. Yeah, we, we listen to everything. Yeah. yeah. Very, yeah, it's, very no, as you should, thing. as you should. Very I can eclectic. listen to the Cardigans one minute and then listen to Death Metal the next. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, it, it's, it's weird. It's like, see, my I mix bet is you weird. when you listen to, like, the Cardigans in your car and you see somebody next to you pull up, you just roll up the windows on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so they, I, you know what? I'm, I'm honest. I'm, I'm be really honest. I don't care. You don't give a shit. You just I, say, I'll, "Fuck I'll it." You say bump it. To it. Like, love me, love me. <laughs> say that you love me. And you look at the old yeah, lady like, looking at you. No, dude. Like, I made eye contact with the old bearded guy when I didn't have a beard, uh-huh. and he just like. <laughs> he just looked at me and I'm like oh shit damn you're rolling my window really now yeah, and, then, and then no we were stuck next to each other at the light uh-huh. and the next song that comes on no shit YMCA what the fuck <laughs> yeah was, and I'm like I'm, like, I'm, t- I'm taking this red light <laughs> I was like yeah I'm gonna die <laughs> it just happened to me on the way here I was listening to some Portishead actually funny it's, it's <laughs> random you know this music starts coming up on your, on your stuff and yeah. Portishead came up and um, it was at Rhodes. It was mm-hmm. that song Rhodes by Portishead. And there was this girl next to me. I was bumping. I didn't care. Yeah. Man. I, just, <laughs> I didn't care. And I was like, I look over. She's just looking at me, man. Like, what was this guy listening to? You know? <laughs> I didn't care. Like you. And I was just like, mm-hmm. I looked at her. Light turned green. We both took yeah. off. And it was like, well, I'm pretty sure she's telling this story right now. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what I just seen? I, I love female singers of all kinds of music. I mean, like, the, the, this girl's all band punk girl. Or, I'm sorry, all girl punk band. I just said that completely backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sexy uh, kid. I, it. Yeah, I, but I love, you know, I love stuff like that. That's why I like, like, the cranberries yeah. and stuff, you know. Uh, uh, the Breeders, dude. Mm, uh, there you go. Yeah. It's all 90s shit. Yeah. I'm dating myself a lot. Hey, man, but it's, it's actually good, good stuff. I love listening to that stuff. You know, I'm not embarrassed to say I like that stuff. You like that? Yeah. Pat, yeah. Pat, but I've shit. never heard... Um, I've heard some stuff, uh, Portuguese of other language stuff in it. I'm like, man, I wish I knew what the fuck they were saying. Yeah. Like, uh, to me, and I wish I had like the little bouncing ball with, a, <laughs> with some <laughs> kind of translation, you know? <laughs> But I don't no. think you need to know what they're saying. No, you get it though. You could yeah. like you could, you could I capture mean, yeah, emotion like where yeah. in English you don't capture that emotion. Yeah, sometimes I don't really. Sometimes I don't. I'm, I hate to say it, but some people hate that I say this. But I sometimes I need to listen to lyrics. Mm-hmm. I just listen to the melody. I hear a lot of people say that, and yeah. I, as a singer, lyrics are the first thing I listen exactly. to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah sort of but mm-hmm. I hear a lot of other people say that they they're not listening to the lyrics. Yeah, yeah to me, it's always what's overpowering the vocals or the music more. Mm. What, what stands out more is the vocals. If the vocal stands out, I'm gonna listen to vocals more. Like Porter said, the music's awesome, but the vocals just to me it just it just stands out yeah. I listen to that dude very depressing music <clears throat> but it's really nice yeah like uh, it's a fire mm-hmm. yeah, it's, that's gonna be played at my funeral dude there you go <laughs> I already oh, know yeah. it man oh yeah <laughs> I like, think that's I would, gonna I would, be playing. I would like I would listen to it and I, like I picture everybody at the funeral, like the, the ten <laughs> the ten or eleven people that show up and just like <laughs> I got friends, you know. <laughs> I would be cremated, man. I'd love to play that in the background. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be buried. I want to be cremated. <laughs> I'm going back to lyrics just for a second because uh-huh. I was trying to find to make sure that I was saying the name right. But you know, Rihanna's song S and M. S and M. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went when I was living in England I had a friend from Italy and he was just like 
singing so loudly these lyrics in the street and i was like dude like Mm-hmm. Do you know what you're thinking about? And he, he had no idea. No idea. But, you know, he's just used to repeating the sounds. Yeah. And so for him, it was totally normal to be singing S&M in the, in the streets. But I'm like, oh, God. Okay. And so, I mean, I guess if you don't know what it means, it doesn't matter if you like it. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Yeah, just, you don't need to understand the lyrics. Well, that's my fear. That's my fear. I bet I'll be singing something about, like, like I like guys and... <laughs> Hey, I'm really good at hitting on women in Spanish because let's be real, I learned most of my Spanish with music. So. <laughs> Romeo Santos. Well, you know, funny thing you guys talking about lyrics and music is they say when you're sad, you listen to the lyrics. When mm-hmm. you're happy, you listen to the music. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. I'm one of those like drowning myself in sad music when I'm sad. Like somehow it's better to make myself as depressed as humanly possible. <laughs> Instead of trying to bring myself up, I'm like, oh my God. I feel your misery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell that's me what, about that's it. That's what sells. That's what sells too. You know? Exactly. Really gonna listen to it more because they at that moment that's what they felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've, I've I've bought a lot mm-hmm. of music based on that just because of that <laughs> moment. You know, like I got a bass. <laughs> so You're like, had, me too, me too, I feel that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy has a crazy record collection at home. Yeah. Like yeah. a crazy amount of stuff. He like he brings stuff like, Wow, dude, how'd you get that, man? <laughs> yeah, and I have a variety of different type of genres too. What do you use most to listen to music? Like I'm a Spotify person. Um I think Pandora. Okay. Yeah, Pandora's probably the most. Lately I've been getting into Spotify barely just barely in the past couple months but i, I just like it for like sharing song lists when i'm yeah. trying to learn with other people mm-hmm. but like for example right now my my list of songs si tete la uh i don't even know how to pronounce someone it's an italian nel blu dipinto di blu <laughs> that's not right at all paint, but, paint the uh, wall blue back to, <laughs> back there to, it is back to black uh vai au regime uh and those events what that blah, 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 blah. Was that blah, blah, blah? Or was that actually a song? <laughs> no, that was blah, no, blah, like, blah, blah. It's just the most <laughs> random mix of <laughs> things. <laughs> Jardin d'hiver. Like, I just, I don't even know what, why I decided I love these songs, but usually I don't have as much in English. But again, a lot mm-hmm. of it's because of learning, and then some of it's just I get really excited with the, the different world sounds. Captures and emotions. Kalema emotion. is yep. one of my favorite, favorite, favorite bands ever in, uh, in this moment. They're from... Cape Verde, Where's which that? is just off the coast of Africa, mm. um, but they sing in Portuguese, and it's just so beautiful. I love their stuff. I'm gonna start looking up these bands. Yeah, yeah. Later, seriously, I'll, I'll send us. send us a link to. All <laughs> no, Kalema's really good, but it's pop music. I mean, mm-hmm. it, you know what? Speaking about that, um, I listen to your music. By the way, I really like it. Um, <laughs> I was listening to this one song by Irene Cara, Fame. Oh yeah, and I you caught me off guard with that song. I was seriously listening to it, right? And yeah. I, when I first mm-hmm. heard it on Spotify, I was I was listening to it, and I'm like, "Fame!" I just seen the name "Fame," you know. Yeah. I'm listening to it. I'm driving, and it hit me. It's like, is that song? Wow. Yeah, because it's so different. What in, like what made you sing that one? Like speaking about is it is it because so of actually the, yeah. <laughs> it's already I didn't make the way that that cover is. Um, but I actually wrote, I, I sang it when my cousin died. So um, my cousin was 19. He was a baseball player and he died in a, an accident. Mm-hmm. And I was in Vegas. Um, I was at like a, a networking meeting. And I got a text message from my little brother telling me that Eric had died. Mm-hmm. And at first I was just kind of pissed. I was like, "What? why would you text me that? You know, like yeah. maybe he's not serious, whatever. Um, and then I saw that I had several missed calls from my mom and I had missed calls from a bunch of people. So I was like, okay, maybe they're serious. So I left the meeting, I called and they said, yeah, he's really dead. And then one of the guys that I had just met in the networking Mm -hmm. meeting, he came out and he's like, is everything okay? And I was like, I have to go. So I drove to Utah, um, Mapleton, Utah is where, was where he lived. Um, I drove all through the night. And when I arrived at the house in the morning, his mother, um, my aunt, she Mm -hmm. was, Kind of like she had her legs crossed and she was sitting in the middle of her living room in her beautiful, huge home. And she was crying and she said, I just want to burn the house down because all of this is for him. And if mm. he's not here, I just want to burn everything. And seeing my aunt with her long, black, beautiful hair just sobbing like this because of my cousin, yeah. um, it destroyed me. And he was very well known. Mm-hmm. 
in the community because of baseball. Um, like everybody was always talking about him. He was always on like stories and whatever. So <laughs> I, I wanted to write something for him. And I remember singing in the song, in the car and nothing was coming that like made sense. And then I heard that song and I was like, I have to sing this song. Mm -hmm. So right. I stopped at a friend's house. The producer that I'm used to working with in Vegas wasn't answering and it was late. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like, it was really late at night. Um, but when I was driving back, I had already mm -hmm. driven all night. It was after the funeral and I don't, I don't handle death well. I don't handle sadness well. And so yeah. I've just been sobbing the whole time, but um, his friend answered mm -hmm. and I was like, Hey, I need you to help me with this. Can you, can you play the guitar and the, or whatever he's playing? Is it bass guitar? I don't even mm -hmm. remember what he's playing in that song. Yeah. But, um, so we did that and he did a tambourine and we just recorded it that night. Wow. It's but it was nice. really one of those like just quick. Yeah. Um, can I please, I want to send him yes, something. Yes, that was kind of very thing. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It was Thank seriously. Yeah, there's a lot of feeling in it actually. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, yeah. like, what's the backstory in it? Because there's actual feeling to it. You yeah, know? if you watch like the YouTube video at the very mm -hmm. end, I put something about, mm -hmm. about Eric. Eric Mack, rest in peace. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what it about what that that's what that song is to me. Mm -hmm. Nice, Fame. thank you, thank you for sharing that story. It was, yeah. it was very nice. I was like, you know, because after I heard it, like, I was wondering, like, it's such a happy song, you know, when you hear it, like, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden mm -hmm. that version yeah. it just takes you back like yeah. to a whole different mm -hmm. realm. Like, oh my God, this is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe you created in that version you know what i'm saying like people should really hear this song so really <laughs> so guys please look it up yeah that that line in particular the hey am i gonna live yes baby mm -hmm. remember my name um his father is very very well known and so he's made like they've basically started a bunch of um like college scholarships mm -hmm. Mm -hmm based on him and oh, wow. it's just that idea that like you don't want to forget him uh -huh. um, yeah, like a paying homage to him. and also crazily enough he had <laughs> he was young but he had um two kids so he but that were born like one was born after mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. one was born just before his death uh -huh. and i remember just seeing them and thinking like that that's going to carry on your name but yeah mm -hmm. th that's that's why that's why i recorded oh, cool. that song just because nice. i wanted something to kind of give to yeah to Eric's mother and to Eric's father. That's cool. why I sent them that. This is weird how like death brings out some things like that. That's crazy. Because I had a dear friend of mine pass away, same thing, like actually two friends, and I just got started drawing, didn't stop drawing forever. Yeah. But I just I'm the opposite. I can't share that stuff. It's too personal for me. Yeah. Oh like, no. Yeah, for me I really that's <clears throat> why I did it was to share. Mm -hmm. But also it just puts your life so much in perspective. Like yeah. after that it was one of those things I remember sitting you know, you have people pissed that they're waiting in traffic and you're yeah. sitting there thinking like Okay, you're waiting in traffic because there's an accident. Can you think about the fact that somebody's hurt? Or can yeah. you think about some of the fact that somebody's dead? And exactly. This has affected somebody else's lives for the mm -hmm. rest of forever instead mm -hmm. of you might be two minutes late. Like, yeah. Like, just stop. It makes you stop, but it makes you think about your life. Yeah, yeah. put everything in perspective. Yeah. Time. yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm actually the same way. Like, I, when people complain about traffic. That's why I hate traffic, you know, because I know somebody got hurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's my, my biggest thing. Yeah, that dude. changed that forever for yeah. me. Yeah, but like, yeah, when Angel passed, we're going to have a podcast on our friend Angel. Yeah. <clears throat> really good guy, really good uh, singer. I mean, one of the funniest guys I ever met. Yeah. You know, he passed away, you know, he was murdered and oh, took, taken away from us. And we're going to have a podcast. And, and the funny thing is, everybody wants to be part of it just has nothing but funny stories about him so they're like we're not going to portray that he died it's, it's going to sound like he's still Celebrate, alive maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I like that I like that yeah and I'm like that's going to be a good podcast so he touched a lot of people and same thing his daughter was born after he passed away you know so it's it's going to be kind of weird and we have some songs of him so like keeping it uplifting instead of mm -hmm. being depressing about yeah. something yeah yeah and when we have a, I posted a video on YouTube of his one of his uh, performances. <laughs> and he has these size uh, fifty two baggy pants, <laughs> oh, and he's he's skinnier than you probably. <laughs> so like like stories like that, we're always we're always laughing about it. But yeah, it's 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 just weird. I, you, when somebody passes away, you just artistically, any artist will just go to their natural thing. You know, I started drawing him on toilet paper or whatever, yeah. and then just progress to the big thing. And then I I got it all, and I just do it away like i couldn't show it to anybody so that's amazing really? you're able to do that for your for yeah your. i'm I'm very much the opposite like mm -hmm. i really like sharing things but mm -hmm. i guess in a way it's like i feel like it didn't happen if i don't share with yeah. people yeah. i'm in like the social media area yeah. era <laughs> where everybody, everybody plays everybody's doing i'm very like that too i don't like posting mm -hmm. a lot of 
you know, private stuff. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, so stuff that I never, you know, nobody needs to know that, you know, I'm having a good time and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go off of it, but it's more like it's a discipline thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My natural instinct is to post stuff. Yeah. But since I would prefer not to, then mm-hmm. like right now I don't have Instagram. I delete the app so that I won't go on it or. Mm-hmm. I think the Facebook is completely useless. <laughs> but no, that's not true. Not useless. I just prefer not to use it. But I go off of it for a very long period of time. But at the same time, I get really excited about sharing things. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. like oh my God, I created this thing. I want everybody to see it yeah. Yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, there's a purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah music purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, music. I only use Facebook to like, keep like, so my family stops bugging me. Like, what you been up to? Like, it's on <laughs> Facebook, dude. Like, I don't like talking to certain family members. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like I used to just have fun with her and talk smack. Now it's more like, all right, here, mom, see, you could keep up with me. Here's my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just, yeah, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sometimes do it. I mean, I, as, as an artist, like, we're not, um, I think I asked you earlier, but as far as, like, what, what inspires you the most, you know? Like, what is it when you're writing a song? Like, what is it that, this one thing that you see or you're, you're around is there ever culture culture is yeah. the most and travel yeah. um if i were better at writing i would write a lot more about travel and the experience uh, the experiences mm-hmm. that you have mm-hmm. i travel a lot by myself um i love my boyfriend dearly but we don't necessarily travel very well together <laughs> um and realistically i have a lot more experiences when i travel by myself because you know when you're mm-hmm. sitting in a restaurant by yourself versus with another person like nobody's going to talk to you if you're sitting with somebody mm-hmm. whereas When you're clearly a foreigner in their country and you're by yourself, (laughs) you know, everybody's curious. Mm -hmm. And so you end up having more conversations and then conversations lead to experiences. And I love the idea of writing about those things. And that inspires me a lot in my music. And it's one reason that I like so much the the different world rhythms, Uh um, because certain rhythms remind me of certain experiences that I've had. And so that's why I want to put all of them Mm -hmm. (laughs) together in my album. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I love it. I, like, it gets me really, really excited. That's the idea cool. of like, oh, wait, okay, so I went to Colombia, so I want to have like this instrument mm-hmm. that, that reminds me of that, or I went to Africa and I want to have this that reminds me of that, or like a little bit of this language, a little bit of that language. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So I guess my, my art's a little bit selfish. It's really no, for no, me no, no, that's, no, <laughs> that that's, I want to <laughs> share with other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually different. That's actually yeah. I never that's that different. Kind of, yeah, yeah oh. I never heard that kind of answer. That which is yeah, people people think it's really weird. Like no, I I love the idea because like when I went to Korea, I was by myself and I had to make all new friends there, and it's a mm. total different yeah, experience that way. Like, you, you're right about yeah. that. It, even language wise, mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. forces me to speak to people because, um, like, if I go to my boyfriend right mm-hmm. now, uh, we'll go to Portugal, and I will probably more be more shy because I know that he can speak to people, mm-hmm. and if I'm by myself, then I'm like, oh God, I have to figure out how to say this phrase yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. because otherwise I'm screwed. So I think I kind of hide behind other people mm-hmm. when I'm with them. That's Whereas true. where I'm, when I'm by myself, I'm really uh, like an extrovert. Yeah. So when I'm with people, I'm more introverted. I'm a little bit more shy. But when I'm by myself, mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you ever wrote a song about a, a person that you bumped into like that? Like a random weird person? Like, I'm going to write a song about this guy's shoes. No, <laughs> no, not yet. His sandals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe in the future. Yeah, you know. Know, you might, not, yeah, yeah. One day you might be eating a restaurant. You might pick up a spoon and might write about us. You know, oh, you know what? Though I did, um, I didn't. It didn't go very far, but I did start writing about a girl that I saw in business class because I remember getting on the plane and sitting in my little sweet thing, and I look over and there's a girl. Like you, you're obviously fed well in this in this class and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you're super comfortable, but just this very beautiful like thin model type Mm -hmm. um she had brought her own salad and i remember thinking like what are you doing (laughs) why are you why are you doing that but also what really um made me curious about her is like she just seemed so lonely like Mm. she took a couple of phone calls but she seemed really annoyed with them and i just remember feeling kind of like sad for her just because she didn't you know because you're in a suite you're not sitting next to somebody that you can chat with and i really like that i really like i've met so many cool people on airplanes my first real gig was mm-hmm. actually i sat in the middle next to a guy who ended up hiring me wow <laughs> oh wow damn keith big shout out to keith because <laughs> so i love him <laughs> uh, cool. but yeah like i really like the idea of meeting people and chatting with people and i think that once you get to a certain level and a certain um status mm-hmm. then you become isolated 
and that's what I felt about that girl. So I remember I, I wrote about it, but I didn't mm-hmm. do anything with it. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll see a song about that. Yeah. But, but right now, kinda it's like, nothing. Uh, oh, it makes sense. Like, yeah, like uh, Stan Getz has that that girl from Ipanema. You know, she's. Ah, yeah, like untouchable. See, and it's, it's like about a girl of that. See, so there you go. See, <laughs> so therefore, therefore, that 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 story said, you know, it could be a girl, whatever she was doing. You know, yeah, yeah. For her, she just seemed not untouchable. So I mean, it's different in a way, but she she just seemed lonely. Mainly, she seemed lonely. But yes, so yes, I have I guess written about random people, and I. If I were more of a photographer, I would take pictures of random people. So sometimes I try to like sneakily take them. Um, I do some videos of people. Like there's a girl. <laughs> God, that's a map. Hey, that's the best. That's probably I'm... bigger than my carry-on. So when I travel abroad, I bring a carry-on. I will go for one month with a carry-on. So that took a lot of work. Mm-hmm. You I'm always surprised when I see girls go to Vegas with like oh, two 50 pound bags. I'm like, so what? You, I mean, why? One you, bag's all how, makeup. Oh, so you're going for a year? Or, no, we're going for two days. I'm like, oh, Dang. okay, yep, great. Because, then, like, this one, this bag's shoes. This one's makeup. This is all my dresses. I'm like, yeah, but you're gonna be in the hotel room choosing. Wow. But you, when mm-hmm. I go to Vegas. <laughs> I bring a train case. It's very, very small. I wish you could see my hands right now, audience. But <laughs> so about um, twelve inches. I bring a dress. <laughs> I bring a pair, pair of heels, and then I bring like something simple to fly back in, because <laughs> you don't need anything else. Otherwise, yep. you're going to be thinking the whole time about your what you're going to be wearing. Mm-hmm, instead yeah. of, and it's just Vegas for us. Vegas is a forty-five minute flight. So, but anyway, when I travel yeah. abroad, I bring mm-hmm. I bring a carry-on, and then I bring my purse. So that camera is not going to work for me. Well, the nice thing is you carry this like a purse. <laughs> See the strap on here? Oh, shit. Okay, like, so I'm going to have to is. forego my purse. This yeah. is part of my uniform now at work. I always yeah. have it now. I'm always taking pictures of people. That's cool. I see them, too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got some that people want me to share, but and I got I, some really good ones. And right. I love candid pictures. Yeah. I love oh, yeah. taking pictures. Yeah, I don't like posing. Me neither. I don't. I, I like want the person in a natural state. Random people just... Of mm-hmm. course, there's there's a trick to doing it too, but it's just yeah. That's the thing. As soon as they know that yeah, you're taking it, it oh yeah, yeah. For it's sure. just a trick. I do. I definitely yeah. step it up. They, they just, know what eye is sloping lower, so they <laughs> even yeah. it out. Yeah. I hate that, dude. I, I used to go to for party. me. I suck in my chin because I know that like if I'm talking, then it's down here, right? Like that. So uh. I'll- <laughs> I love taking pictures at parties. Like, just random. I don't tell people I'm taking pictures. Like, you know, mm-hmm. they're sitting there, you know, drinking their beer. Just a gesture. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, just a gesture of their hand. Just doing that. That's it. Here, take one. And then I'll... And I actually, I, oh I, after, you know, after I go in and I, you know, I, I print them out, I give it to them. Mm-hmm. They, they're amazed, you know. Wow. should have told me. Like, hey, I look great. Yeah, like, you should have yeah. told me. I should have... No, this is a point. You know, you yeah. want to see it in, yep. this, in this realm because, yep. you know, the minute I tell you, pose, it changes everything. Yeah, you know, they on, get all scared. Well, yeah, most you know, of us don't know how to pose, yes. let's be real. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of people, as soon as they, they see a camera, hands yeah, on the exactly. hip. Yeah, exactly. It's be slimmer. <laughs> that's like our friend Beto. He, he takes these with an older Polaroid camera. So all those, those are all like, and oh, it's, yeah. it's real hard to focus on that. So they're all unique and you're not going to get, the, you're not going to capture that any other way. Yeah. So that's you? why when he shot me with the light, I'm like, just leave it like that. No yeah. Way. I like it like that. Just... <laughs> Oh my off. god! I didn't even notice that photo because I thought it was faded. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I told him. I go, this, he's like, "You want to know?" I'm like, "No, do I like it like that? It's different." You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pol- Polaroid, and he has the light behind him, so he's completely faded out. Yep. <laughs> no, it looks like it doesn't look like a lineup. Like, like these guys robbed the bank. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is definitely what I thought when I came in. This is a. Uh, the, okay, so they all have mugshots. No, that's <laughs> Nemo right there. Yeah, that's the other bad Nemo. That's their, that's their mugshots. There Chris just is. looks like a Cuban refugee, dude. <laughs> 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 like a poet, though, you know? And then there's the dogs in the middle of all these other yep, mugshots. There it is. Yeah. yeah. What did they do? Hmm. <laughs> it, they, they produce a podcast. <laughs> yeah, the, the worst kind of this, person ever. Yeah, you heard them on the podcast. They're in the background. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's there they right. go. They're, they're, they're like they're queuing everything up. Yeah. Exactly. So, what do we expect from you in the future? Near future. My aerial album. Actually, nice. in the, okay, wait. In the super near future, you're gonna have a random cover <laughs> for a "Fly Me to the Moon." With, I want to hear um, another Nirvana one. Yeah. Oh, I do. I can do that. Will you that was me? nice. Even yeah, I'll do even a Porter like said one. Yeah, um, it's a fire. Yep, uh, okay. that's a song I could hear you singing. Yeah, Send it I to could me. too. <laughs> it's one of my favorite songs, and if it's good enough, you, 
Well, play it at my funeral. You know, be cool. You know, be cool. Remember that the lullaby concept you're talking about? Yeah, make a lullaby. I love lullabies. There you go. They they t- somebody lullabies. took a bunch of '90s songs like hits. Yeah. And made them into lullabies. Oh, boom. Yeah. yeah. It's actually I sent it to him last night. Yes. He's like, oh wow, I'm oh, supposed yeah. to my kids. Yeah. I love lullabies. I actually fell asleep to one. Day. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I fell asleep I right fell asleep after that. To yeah, ironically, I don't listen to lullabies. I, I fall asleep in silence, but I really do love. But anyway, for future projects, I guess. Um, I mean, the aerial thing, I would say, will take at least a year, and then um, I have a single coming out in Simple Rhythm. Realistically, the song is structurally complete. Um, there's just a few things in the in the mix that i want to change a little bit and the music video for that Mm -hmm. and then everything else i want it to be a little bit based around ariel at least for the time being and i want to start to learn to do ariel duets i don't know if you call it that duos Mm -hmm. Um, i want to start learning to dance on the ariel things with different with Mm -hmm. with a partner i guess got you so yeah i guess this is what will be happening in the next couple i don't know i'm just picturing a bunch of photography stuff for that yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Big for time. Sure. That'd be a lot. That'd be awesome. It's just a hard bunch to, of cameras. Th- the thing that's difficult about it is finding a place to put the apparatus because a lot of them are gyms. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need a good spot to put the apparatus to take the photos. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it would be an awesome shoot. Good warehouse. Yeah, that yeah. stresses that go across. You can tie it up to that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you, you just have to make sure it's very, very, very secure. <laughs> have you ever sang? Well, up there, like no, and it's not even it's not even no. my goal. No. Um, I know like Pink's done it, whatever. That's what everybody mentions oh, okay, as yeah. kind of the reference, right? But I have no intention of doing no. that. No, I I don't mind at all having them as two separate elements, having the singer next to the apparatus. Mm. I don't think it's necessary for me to sing while I'm on the apparatus. So it's not. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. I'm sure it's amazing, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine it. Not in my plan. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh, oh. it's we're just, it's just a whole different training, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I think Pink had mentioned that when she trained, they punched her in the stomach what? while she was singing, so that they, so yeah, she could, you your know, your air gets out of you. Yeah, I mean, if you hear like the way that I'm talking right now, yeah. that's mm-hmm. happening yeah. sometimes. You're it. you're maybe flopping onto something or whatever, and I. I just don't find that necessary. So you're not looking forward to getting punched in the stomach? No. That's a no-go? No. I have bruises in places that nobody should have bruises. <laughs> and luckily, my boyfriend's totally cool with it. Like, the last time that I was like, oh, my God, that's so ugly. And he's like, oh, it's fine. It just means that you're, like, really into what you're doing. <laughs> thanks, that's babe. Fine. Thanks. <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. And I'm just so white that you see everything. So every time I have a little bruise, it just looks so dramatic. <laughs> But I've gotten used to them. Like, it just, it's pretty normal to have mm-hmm. bruises on my hips mm-hmm. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I think I was on my cell phone. No, I have actually, like, a, I'm actually, no, it's only actually, I, I kind of knew you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm excited to do the, like, I want to do the follow up for the Symbol Rhythm single because I would like to show the mm-hmm. elements of writing the song. Um, that's maybe what I'm most excited about is showing how the song came to be and, like, even talking about that a little bit. Mm hmm. Okay, so if there's any producers out there that want to produce world music that Ariel is convinced to let me know. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> dance music, huh? Kizomba, dance like Zook. Um, I don't know. And it doesn't even have to be rhythm specific. Just I want to have world sounds in it. You like Onga? I don't know what that is. Oh. Look them up. Onga. Onga. I'll put them on mm-hmm. my list. What was the one you told me? What was the name of that other band? I can't remember. I gotta look up the text message, like 10,000 text messages ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the, 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 the only one. So, how can people find you? Your it's music? Bonga. It's Bonga. Uh, okay, not Onga. It's Bonga. Mm-hmm. It's Bonga with a B. They can find me in my house. Yeah. They can find me in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my name's Elaine Bracken. E L A I N E space b-r-a-c-k-i-n and you're on not e-n i-n uh i'm on instagram as elaine bracken music uh, my website is elaine bracken.com uh spotify i'm on spotify elaine bracken <laughs> no that's good that's and good. youtube you youtube also that. is you elaine bracken yeah. um 
what else do I have? I have SoundCloud. SoundCloud. I don't really use it. <laughs> also, Elaine. But I have it. Yeah. Also, Elaine Brackett. No, that's good because you don't want to have. But yeah, the spelling tips, yeah. is actually more important than you would think because mm-hmm. sometimes people will put the E N and it doesn't find me. So E L A I N E, B R A C K I N. I N people. I N is important. Yeah, cause we, we've been working Instagram, on Instagram. Though is probably my most um, mm-hmm. common place. Like, yeah. I I would like to start to be a little bit more present on YouTube, but I'm just not like Instagram. I can have while I'm on the go. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do a lot of actual posts. You have to look at my story to see what's happening, <laughs> because I kind of like the fact that it disappears. I, I like that I can <laughs> share stuff and then that you don't have it anymore. See, I, I'm the opposite because I I did all that hard work. Oh yeah, that's first true, disappear. That's true. No, some of it, some of it, I'll post for like permanent mm-hmm. posts, but. A a lot of it's just like and you see me now you don't that's it till next time i got all, i got i got all four of mine <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool that you guys actually